Did you know that there are now microplastics inside? Yes, inside our fruit and our vegetables. Find out what's the story, what we're gonna do about it as a farm. Stay tuned. I'm disturbed. Actually, I'm kind of aghast. The idea that inside of our fruit there are now microplastics, and even inside our vegetables? I didn't know. I didn't know what's going on. I had heard, and I knew about the ocean microplastics, and I thought, yeah, well, fish ingest it, and whales, and seabirds, and so on. And they ingest it, and some of them, or many of them, even die from an overload of plastics. But that's in the ocean. I can understand why in the ocean, where the waves and even on the beaches, plastics would get broken down into finer and finer particles, microplastics. But when I was pointed out in a recently Somebody had said, and I put out the mulch video on the mulch mistakes, and somebody said, did you see the article and how microplastics are now in the fruit? I thought, what? In the fruit? I thought, what? I have to go, and I, I dove into the article, and that's one of the benefits of having a science degree. I got a bachelor's and a master's in science. I know how to go through scientific literature. And I had to go through it to say, what is, what? Like, what inside of our fruit? Doesn't mean I won't eat it, but I'm disturbed because I might have contributed to this, not the one in the study, but overall, I use plastic as a farmer. And actually, I, I would be hard pressed to find a farm that doesn't use plastic in some way. It's everywhere. So going back to the idea of in the oceans, yes, but on land? What? On land? That it's gotten into the, in the cells of fruit? What? I'm, I'm disturbed. I'm perplexed. <sighs> This is not good. This is, this is terrible. What have we done? What have I done? But what's going on? I had to start thinking through the whole process, our farm. How could, how could microplastics be inside the fruit? Well, I use plastic mulch, yes. I use plastic irrigation. Yes, plastic lines for irrigation. Uh, I use plastic in um, main lines to bring the water to the pump, which has some plastic. No, it doesn't, not the pump. But the filters, they're plastic. And then the water goes through and it goes onto the soil and tree roots. You're telling me tree roots and vegetable roots can pick it up and actually deposit it inside. I, I'm not in disbelief. I am, I am really disturbed by this. <sighs> hey, if there's somebody who's trying harder than I am to grow in a way that's harmonious with nature, geez, that is fantastic. Because I'm doing everything I know, you know, we brought in biodiversity right into the orchard. We grow our whole orchard in trios where there's trees that are not even fruit or nuts. We grow with nitrogen fixing trees. We don't even put a monoculture. It's two different species of trees next to each other as fruit. We'll have apple and pear and apple and plum and cherry and apple or combinations. So look, I've 
if I know it could be better for the fruit, for biodiversity, for the environment, I'm there. I've done it. I used to be organic. I had one of the biggest organic apple orchards almost 30 years ago. I've done that and I think I've moved way past that with the permaculture orchard and go see the film if you don't know anything about this. We've done it like we have done a lot to make it better, more harmonious with nature. You want wildlife, you want birds, like show me something I could do more and I'll do it because I've done a lot. We have almost 300 nest boxes for birds on 12 acres. We have structures for native bees. We encourage wasps. Yes, we encourage wasps. Go see that wasp video if you don't believe me. I mean, we want wasps in our orchard. Like the soil, you want practices that are good for the soil? We have not tilled the soil in this orchard for, actually it, it hasn't been tilled in 40 years, but we've had it for almost 30 years and no tillage, no working of the ground. We've done that for soil. In the last few years, I, I started years ago with rotating how we mow so that we don't mow the whole orchard at once. We've done that. I've been, I've been using roller crimping for five, four years now. And that's an incredible technique to build soil, to improve the soil. We have done, we have done everything I know. And now to find out that we can have microplastics inside our fruit. Like this is, this is really disturbing. I'm, I'm disturbed. Like, you know, I had this, I just found out about this, yes, two days ago. And I've been going for about a day trying to figure out where, where could it come from? And in this study, in environmental research, it's August 2020, it's recent. They looked at samples in Italy. It was done from Italy. So you think, well, who's concerned about the food they eat? Are Italians concerned? Yes, Italians are concerned about the food they eat. So you think they're just gonna do practices that are you know, grossly terrible for the environment and for the food they know. They want good vegetables and they want great fruit. And this one's been pecked by a bird even because we get so many birds. You see that? The birds have been at it. So they are concerned. And, and to find that they did samples and in fruit, they found, they did two, apple and pear. Apples are the most have the most of all the fruit and vegetables, but they didn't sample everything. But still, they found apples had the most microplastics, more than pear. And then in vegetables, they found carrots had the most. And I, had to, I really dug into the research and they found lettuce had the least. So there was a bit of a clue there. And I thought, wait a minute, if apples have the most, so apples have the most, pears less. Well, okay, but fruit trees, fruit had more than vegetables. Now this is one study, mind you. I looked into how they, you know, I thought, did they have contamination? Did they have, you know, you, you learn by doing research and you learn by studying research papers how to go through their whole methodology. What did they do? What's the method they used? How did they do it? And I went through it and they did, they took great care to make sure there wasn't contamination. They found, they just took fruit from the store, starting with having gloves so that they wouldn't contaminate the samples with plastic. And then I thought maybe it's, you know, they, they do the skin, no. So they took the fruit. So they started by taking fruit from the store and they put them in glass containers so that they wouldn't contaminate in any way with microplastics. 
and then they brought them into a lab and every step they did in the lab they used non-plastic instruments they used glass beakers and glass tubes and everything else they used a glass apparatus with stainless steel to chop up the sample and so they chopped it up and they looked inside yes inside the fruit and they found microplastics like that that was new to me and it yeah it's disturbing maybe i overemphasized the word but that's that's terrible like how where have we like how have we gotten here so they did that study and so i i could see that if trees are in the ground for years the chance that they pick up any little particle of plastic that's in the soil you think well plastic isn't naturally microplastics aren't naturally in the soil no and you think i got to think through the you know uh, a farming operation and there are many many steps starting from the machinery that you use to work the fields many of them are metal but there's plastic parts on a tractor and then once they've worked it in an orchard and I can see in an orchard in Italy they probably use irrigation so there's irrigation lines if it's an orchard and it's conventional because it was from a grocery store uh, there would be sprays involved so they could spray the orchard with a sprayer which is I haven't seen a metal tank on a sprayer for years so they're plastic tanks with plastic nozzles in their high pressure to spray the stuff onto the trees and the things that are sprayed they're not plastic but they come in plastic containers and plastic bags and they are in many cases quite as acidic so they can degrade into the liquid or into the water that's just to get to the spray and the tree planted and then what well if there's irrigation now let's let's go in reverse and say what if i decided to to say okay can if i took out all the plastic yes yeah, see here's here's overhead irrigation and the overhead spray we we spray using these overhead lines and it's a great system we use the mulch so see there's plastic there's plastic mulch under the trees not many orchards do that granted and we use irrigation lines under the plastic here there's drip irrigation lines so we use that we could if we took off these and we took off the plastic mulch and we took off the irrigation well if i did that i know one thing is that eh, i wouldn't have nearly as many trees after a few years because this is sand and we need irrigation here to grow the fruit trees well all right am i going to change this now am i going to tear it all out after finding this out no i won't does that mean i will be eating microplastics and our members will be eating microplastics probably but so there's the but i have a whole area that we've started replanting we have available and i'm talking to anybody who can muster research uh, are you in a university are you in organizations doing research in agriculture i would and we have a great situation here to test with plastic in terms of plastic mulch plastic irrigation plastic lines to irrigate so we have situations with plastic and we have areas that have no plastic some of them have drip uh, drip lines but that could be changed and we can go to a aluminum a sprinkling system it's possible and i would definitely love to be able to see with and without using growing fruit in an area with all this and all the plastics that we do use and an area without the plastic so if somebody wants to 
collaborate to compare and let's see is this is it just this is this the only source well when i ran through the study and i realized wait a minute they were talking about carrots well carrots had the most in vegetables and i thought wait a minute carrots so i was thinking how do carrots get microplastics they don't grow on their plastic mulch they certainly don't use drip irrigation they probably use a sprinkler irrigation system so where is it coming from is it just in the air is it in the rain when we're talking microplastics it's less or equal to 10 micrometers or 10 microns and what's the size i have to look it up that's the size of a fog droplet have you ever seen a fog droplet no it's just mist so that's the size of these particles can they come on the air that's getting really disturbing if it's moving around just on the air if it's coming down in the rain we know pesticides come through the rain and that's a molecule but something like a microplastic in rain i'm disturbed this is this is not good have we gotten to the point that our environment is so polluted by what we do not see and what we see is one thing we see the effects we see the results i grew up in the 70s and i saw what pollution was like it was terrible but it was a visual pollution the water would be polluted the air would be polluted you could see it it was bad and now we think huh ah, it's gotten much better it's cleaner but what it has done is it's gotten from visible to microscopic where we can't see it anymore it's in the water in the groundwater it's in the air and then it's in us <sighs> was this a rant or it was just an observation of something that's very disturbing is that like oh we can't eat our fruit and vegetables anymore no please continue to eat your fruit and vegetables thankfully you have a filter system in your body but does that mean we shouldn't stop and consider what and we certainly need to look into this more and so uh, this farm is available if you want to do comparisons please contact me and let's arrange something that we can do a comparison because we need to know first of all if it's in the fruit and vegetables how did it get there where is it coming from what are the sources what are the biggest sources and how can we do to change that to bring that level to a sane level because this is pretty well insane anyway that's it for today that's my disturbed effect yes i'll still continue to eat but it's not without thinking gosh what is going on and certainly considering going forward how will this change things anyway i'm if if i can leave you on a positive note like i said i've seen the 70s and i've seen how we can mobilize to make positive changes and if you think this is disturbing please share this video let other people be aware of this because we need to raise awareness and start to question things like let's see what uh, where is this coming from and what can we do about it? Thanks for watching! Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the Permaculture Orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com Subscribe, please! Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye! That's all. Microplastics in our fruit and vegetables. Thanks for watching. Yes, see you next time. God willing. Bye.